Farm from the Leicester and from us. I messaged you earlier. Oh yes, thank you, thank you, thank you very much indeed. <coughs> you are very welcome, and how are you, Robert? Are you well? Um, yes, not not so bad. Let me just sort myself out. Uh, no worries. Um, if you could help, I was given a copy of the Quran. <coughs> Sorry, a little bit of a cough there. I know it's okay. Um, I was given a copy of the Quran, the Halali and Khan translation. Um, right, I'd like to know, I have been reading it, I have been looking up various verses. I want to know about the Quran's view of the previous scriptures, please. Okay, first and foremost, uh, thank you for your uh, uh, inquiry, all wanting to know. <coughs> uh, and it's my pleasure to try and explain as best as I can. Mm -hmm. Now, the Quran mentions uh, previous scriptures such as the Torah, the Bible known as the Injil, and the Zabur, which is known as the Psalms, mm -hmm. as divine previous scriptures or revelations. Now, we know that the Bible was revealed, according to Muslims of the Quran, the Bible was revealed to Isa or, or Jesus, and the Torah was revealed to Musa or Moses, and the Psalms was revealed to Dawood or David, and the Quran revealed to Prophet Muhammad. Uh, peace be upon them all. Mm -hmm. um, so, the Muslim view is that whosoever believed in Allah or believes in Allah or in the existence of God and believed in the messenger or the prophet that was sent to them in their time, they were considered as a believer, if I may term it. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in the time of Adam, Moses, Abraham, David, Solomon, Noah, you know, and all of these great personalities, Jacob, whoever believed in Allah or believed in the existence of God and believed in that prophet of the time, as this is the prophet of Allah or prophet of God, and believed in the message of the time. So some prophets were given divine revelations like books and scriptures. Some were given maybe like commandments, the do's and don'ts. Uh, so whoever believed in Allah believed in the messenger or prophet at that time and adhered to the teachings of the time was considered as a successful believing human being. So the Quran believes or says that we have to believe as Muslims in all the previous divine revelations, including the Torah, the the Bible and the Psalms. Uh, but we believe, we believe in the original revelation that was revealed by God and not in the alterations that may have, I'm not saying they have, but may have, taken place but in terms of implementation we only implement the teachings of the Quran however believe that previous scriptures are also divine revelations of God I don't know if that helps answer your question um, not 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 really you've added the word original original scriptures um, I haven't found that in the Quran as I've been reading it um, if I might read Surah 7, 157, please. I've done a lot of work on this. I've been really looking at this for six oh, yeah. months. When I say original, so the word original may have not been mentioned in the Quran. But when I say original revelation, it means that, as we understand, I mean, I'm subject to being corrected as well. I'm also in the process of learning and developing. But it's sort of, I perceive, and as I understand, Maybe when it comes to the Bible, for example, we have the Old Testament, New Testament, yeah? And testaments which were altered by mankind. Um, you need to, hang on, I think that goes against the Quran. The Quran doesn't say that the scriptures have been altered. Would you mind if I read Surah 7, 157, please? Uh, yes, yes, you can, please. Yeah. Um, those who follow the messenger, the prophet who can neither read nor write i Muhammad, whom they find written with them in the Torah, Torah and Injil Gospel with them. And then there's a dash, he commands them for al Mafruf. Um The second reference to with, with them, when I went to the Halali and Khan translation online, it's been deleted from the online version, but it still says, after the word Muhammad, whom they find find written with them in the Torah, Torah and Injil Gospel. 
So when it says they find written with them, it's saying that the Torah and the gospel were existing when the, the, um, those who followed the prophet you know, um, are mentioned in the 7th century. Uh, yes, that's correct. Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the final prophet to be sent on the earth. And Moses, Jesus, uh, David, and other prophets and messengers had come well before Prophet Muhammad. So yes, the Torah and the, the Gospel and other divine revelations were already in existence before the Quran. Um, it says, whom they find written with them in the Torah, Torah, and the Injil Gospel. So it says that they had the Torah and they had the Gospel with them in the 7th century Arabia. There was no corruption or some original scripture that's been lost. The Quran assumes here, and in other places that I've looked at, that the Torah and the Gospel were extant in the 7th century. And if we go back to the ancient documents, we go back to the Dead Sea Scrolls, we can find that the Torah is, you know, you will obviously get in any book, Quran, Bible, Bhagavad Gita, any book that's old, you will find yeah. copying, copying errors. Um, but we have such a multiplicity of biblical documents, we can really work out very clearly what they are to get back to what the original message would have been, even though we, we don't have the original Absolutely. documents. Absolutely. No, I... I, I uh... Believe in that. So, I mean, just as a generic statement, we believe in the revelation of the uh, the gospel, the Bible, the uh, the Torah, the Psalms, etc. Right, but when I was but, given, but what I'm saying, but what I'm saying that I again, I am subject to being corrected or being educated more on this. But as far as I, my research is concerned, I get it, which is very limited on this, and I would appreciate your maybe guidance on this as well. But I believe, uh, I'm not talking about the previous centuries, in this century, in, let's say, for example, today, there are translations of, I, want to, I don't want to name holy books, but just say uh, divine revelations, which were supposedly altered by mankind. I'm not saying the entire revelation or the entire... I, I'm the book, not interested in translations. Sorry, I'm, I'm really not interested in translations. Okay? There are translations of the Quran, the Pictal translation. I've got yeah. the Halali and Khan translation. There's Yusuf Ali translation. So, if you corrupt a book by translating it, then the Quran's been corrupted because that's been translated. So, that's an argument I don't want to go down because it's uh, I don't think it's a valid argument at all. I'm only talking about the original text. The original text yeah, of the I'm Torah... The text. Yes, that's what I mean. The original text of the Torah is in Hebrew. The original text of the Injil Gospel is in Greek. In now, Greek, we have the Torah going back to the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, we have one piece of the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, a tiny, tiny, tiny um, piece of the pre priestly blessing of number 6, 24 to 26, which was uh, written on silver and it was found in a tomb. You know, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. That was written in, in silver and it dates to about 650 BC. That's the earliest portion of the Bible that oh, we have. That's very interesting. That's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. And the Dead Sea Scrolls go back to about 200 BC. That would be the um, whole of the Old Testament except for the Book of Esther. And, it, of course, it would include the Torah. Um, we have tiny portions of the New Testament from the first century. Um, the late first century, but it looks like they found a portion of the Book of Romans in some Roman masks. When the Romans put the Christians to death, they would confiscate their, their, their scriptures, and it looks like one copy of their scripture has been confiscated, and it's been turned into Roman masks to be used on the Roman plays. You know, these were masks with a happy face on one side and a sad face on the other, and they would paint them. But they were made out of paper or papyrus that they glued together. Now, they found recently some of these masks, and they started taking them apart. It hasn't been publicly released yet, but it looks like one of them has a portion. Maybe I don't know how much. It might only be a little bit. But it's got a portion of the Book of Romans, probably from before the fall of Jerusalem. 
probably from about 67 AD. So that's going to become probably the earliest and one of the most important New Testament documents. We've got the whole Bible, Old and New Testament. We have four copies from the 3rd century, Codex Vaticanus, Codex Alexandrus, Codex Sarniaticus, and another one which I can never, never pronounce, um, because it's, uh, hang on, Codex Epiralimi Receptus, Recepticus. Um, and we have in total about uh, five and a half thousand New Testament documents. Some of them are tiny, though. Some of them are just tiny fragments. Um, so we know what the Bible was like by the 7th century. It was the same Bible that we have today. There, there was no corruption of the text. Christians don't go by a, a chain of memorization. They go by texts. And the texts we have confirm that what we have today is, you know, what what they were using in the first century. There was no corruption in Arabia, but if there was a corruption in Arabia, I'm willing to listen, but you'd have to give me evidence, proof of that. And why is there no textual evidence of this corruption in, in Arabia? Right, I mean, I appreciate where you're coming from, but uh, thank you for that information and uh, sort of, uh, uh, how would I word it, the things which I wasn't aware of. So uh, thank you very much, Robert. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the Quran seems to consistently, as I've read it, it seems to consistently affirm that the Torah and the Injil, it calls them truth, Surah 1094, which I, li- I like to read. It calls them truth and scripture in Surah 6114. And wherever you look in the Quran, it always seems to assume that the Torah and the Gospel are the Word of God. It never yes, talks I mean, about. There's no doubt in that. I'd like to accept that. Yeah, beginning. but, but the, so many the, Muslims. The Torah do... and the Psalms and the Bible are uh, divine, divine, God, God's yeah. divine revelation. Yeah, but so many Muslims don't actually teach that. They teach that they have been corrupted. They teach well, that the Torah separate, we have today is not. Discussion. They they teach the Torah. I, mean, I, I don't have the knowledge. Uh, I, I've I've never said that myself. Right. In terms of in in preaching things like that, and so you would have to ask people who preach that to say why on what basis do they do that, and they can only answer why why they do that. Well, they 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 handed me the Quran. This was quite some time ago, and then they ran away. I went to a local mosque near me. I'm actually based quite some way to the south of you. I'm actually in Plymouth. I went to the Piety Centre, which is a large mosque um, uh, about a mile down the road from me. Um, I went there on a Friday. I spoke to three Muslim leaders there who took my telephone number. They gave me this Halali and Khan translation, which is terrible to use for a Westerner because it doesn't number the surahs, it just names them like the cow. Well, it names them in Arabic, Surah Yunus. And Surah 2 is Surah Bakra, the cow. So it's incredibly difficult for a Westerner to use. I want want everything numbered. Yeah, yes, um, I'm, I'm but, sure but, they would have given something more user-friendly. Yeah. Yeah. But nobody got back to me. I was quite offended uh, that no one got back to me in six months. So I studied the Quran for six months, then I phoned them up. And they weren't terribly helpful. I phoned them up um, last week. Um, Surah 1094. So if you, O Muhammad, are in doubt concerning that which we have revealed to you, i.e. that your name is written in the Torah, Torah, and in your gospel, then ask those who are reading the book, Al-Kitab, singular, the Torah, Torah, and in your gospel before you. Verily the truth has come to you from your Lord, so be not of those who doubt it. It says they are reading the book, Al-Kitab, the Torah and Gospel, Al-Kitab, the book singular, before you. So it's saying that in the 7th century, Allah through Gabriel is telling Muhammad that they're reading the book, the Torah and Injil, before you. It it doesn't hint that, oh, they're reading actually a corrupted version of the book, the original's been lost or the original's been corrupted. It doesn't even hint at that anywhere in the Quran. It always assumes that the Torah and the Gospel are what they say they are. The Torah and the Gospel it was existing in the seventh century. Um, right. So, 
other time, everyone will sound rude. I'm just in the next okay. two minutes going to walk into my classroom to teach. Okay, right. Uh, so uh, maybe on another occasion. Yes. Nice speaking to you, Robert. Okay, Take thank care. you very much, sir. Thank all you. All the best, all the best. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.